everybody. My name is Shija Kakintayo and today I'm going to be talking about JavaScript tooling, the evolution and future of JavaScript and front-end build tools. I am a social developer, I'm a developer advocate, I'm also a guest technical author at Smashing Magazine. So why the web is built? So there are certain reasons why um, we build our front-end code today. Um, so this Reasons include dependency management. We need to be able to manage all the dependencies our code needs without having to worry about any of them breaking. We also need transpiling, so we need to be able to use this latest syntaxes without worrying about browser compatibility issues. Um, bundling, we need to be able to package all our codes into um, a central file. Um, minifying, we need to be able to make the size of our code smaller uh, for and have a faster delivery to the client side. Also. One very important part is no module management built in the browser. So the certain browsers that do not have module management. So we need to be able to manage all our modules without having to worry about anything. So the story of building the web. So 2005 to 2010 saw the era of the first bundlers. So Dojo was released in 2005 with its own um, um, build tool called Jodo, Dojo Builder, which offers minification dead code removal, um, multiple build profiles, module management, and can even you can even make use of Node.js for faster build. Um, Google Closure Tools was also released in November 2009 by Google, and it had a compiler. So this is basically its, its own build tool, which helps remove code, dead code, minimize code, lint code, and also optimize code. So problems of the first builder and um, bundlers, why they weren't perfect. So Dojo Builder was heavy. It relied heavily on Java and had a very poor documentation. So um, Google Closure Compiler issues where it was proprietary. Obviously, it was made by Google and it was some kind of an internal project before it was released to the public. Um, it required Java too. Compile time was really slow and it had poor developer experience. So 2010 to 2012 saw the come up of Gulp and Grunt. They were the first to try and standardize building reusable pipelines on top of plugins. Um, it also, they also give developers the freedom to write their own build scripts. And plugins were also available for, uh, readily available for basic tasks for developers. Um, 2012, it saw the come up of Babel. So Babel allowed developers to use latest ES6 syntax without worrying about browser compatibility issues. Um, it converts ESC syntax to common JS and it allows developers to build custom pl um, plugins for their needs. So, but 2012 to 2014 saw so the come up of Browserify. This was the game changer mainly because of it had the power of npm as a package registry. Um, it allowed developers to use certain plugins. It had the same syntax as Node.js and it also has ES6 module syntax. So, developers were pretty much happy, but it had its own drawbacks. So from 2015 till now, we've seen the come up of Webpack of how it has grown from version one to currently version five. And it's a lot of um, corporate giants are currently using Webpack in production. It is faster than Browserify. It has a very cool Webpack um, development server called Webpack Server. And it had in um, features like hot module replacement, um, code splitting, um, live reloading, etc. And it also had the power of NPM scripts, so developers can write their own NPM scripts without worrying about anything. Their own build script basically with NPM scripts. And it had plugins for various uses, and it also had presets for extending the features of Webpack. It also had a better developer experience other than, than other, um, other build tools. It was really, really good for developers. So let's see what the feature looks like. So the future, so we have Rollup. So Rollup is a module bundler for JavaScript. It was released about say five years ago and it, it's easier, it was easier, it's easier to learn obviously and it, had a, it has a very fast build. It offers features like code splitting. It was, it is really, really easy to config, configure compared to Webpack and it's the perfect build tool for building comp, um, JavaScript library because it takes small pieces of code and put it, converts it into a very complex file. So Parcel. So Parcel's selling point when it was released about two years ago was that 
you needed zero configuration. So the pain of developers configuring um, Webpack um, rollups did not happen in Parcel. It had a very fast, it had a faster bundle time. It uses multi-core processing. Um, plugins are not necessarily needed. This is because certain basic tech tasks that are required developers to use plugins were already built into Parcel. So the need for plugins were not really, really that much. Um, it had a, and also developer experience. It has a very nice deco documentation for developers. And it also had a very nice community. It has a very nice community. So Snowpack. So Snowpack is was recently released. Um, its selling point is that it does not need bundling during development. So it skips that bundling process in development. This is because of the power of M ESM imports, ES modules imports. So it is a give, give the ability to skip modeling and bundling during development. Although you need to, so it also provided a plugin where you could use either Parcel or Webpack to create your own production builds. It does not have its own custom um, co um, production um, production build tool currently. Um, it provides instant rebuilds on sale, so because the there's nothing to rebound you, so your change reflects almost immediately. Um, it's obviously a faster build tool, and it has auto out of the box support for TypeScript, Java, JSX, and CSS modules, so you don't need to install plugins for this particular um, languages extensions. So ES build. So ES build is basically an experiment. It's still experimental. Um, it's the main name of the project is to just to show how fast JavaScript build tools can be. It is faster than Webpack rollup and also Parcel. It is written in Go, which makes it really fast because Go compiles to native code. And so far, we're looking at it to be a very, very bright project. So browser import. So browser import is basically making use of your modules in your browser and your script tags in the browser so splitting your code into smaller smaller pieces and delivering them as modules to your JavaScript to, on to the web to the browser basically um so browser support has not really been great but the web is as the web is advancing browser support for um browser imports for AS modules gets would increase also so it had a very so it has a very good advantage like caching so the browser does not once if uh, modules have been reloaded once, the browser does not really need to reload everything unless there's a change in one of the modules. It, you can also async or defer in the script tag for specify your script, your modules to async or defer, which is a very, very um, cool feature for um, for the ES, um, ESM, um, for ESM, for the ES module, basically. And also, um, finally, we have bundling free approaches, runtime import system. So, Basically, bundling free approaches would, basically would use ES, ES modules, so you would not need your webpack, you would not need parcel, this is, you would not need um, snow, um, other build tools for this. You just basically will be bundling directly in the web. So it's basically bundling free. So all of the production, so if you need a production, you would definitely not need a production build. And also, an example is, Snowpack, so Snowpack is trying to make use of the bundling free approach with um, ES modules. It is not too much in use yet, it's still kind of experimental. And if we are able to achieve bundling free approach, we will have lightning fast builds and also deploy time. So, conclusion so the JavaScript ecosystem, tool ecosystem is dynamic. It changes and only the best tools can survive, technically. It's basically a, comp a composition. So, in the future, we'll be seeing tools with no configuration, no configuration at all, um, better customizability, so it gives um, developer more flexibility to do whatever they want to do, um, more extensibility features, and also faster speeds, blazing fast field speeds. So the kind of build tools developers will use for an application's front end is basically a personal call based on the requirements of the project. Um, it's like choosing what works best for you, basically, for that particular project, and most of the time, this, this, this um, selecting developer to um, build tools are kind of um, trade-offs. So, um, so references and useful resources. So this is kind of um, if you need more knowledge on this of what I've spoken on today, you can um, check this out. Check out these links. Um, thank you so much for coming to my talk. I appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.
Thank you.